Hey, do you remember keyboards? The things you spend like half your life touching? So there's a lot of keyboards out there, and it might not be as obvious, but there's a lot of layouts out there as well. And this is a model called Carplex, and it tries to minimize the typing effort in general, but more specifically on the standard staggered keyboards. You can run any piece of text through this, and it'll tell you the various efforts on the different parameters of the model. So it breaks it down into three separate components. The base effort is basically how, how far away your finger graphs travel to hit that key. The penalty looks at these three different weights for uh, like hand preference, row preference, and then which fingers is more difficult to use. And then the path is kind of where the, it gets really complicated because you have three different attributes you're looking at here. Um, basically just imagine a, a, a triad, a three character array. And then for each one of those, you're gonna be looking at which hand it's using, which row it's using, and which finger it's using. There's this index which takes in consideration like which one is more favorable. And it does it linearly from zero to seven. There's three elements here of the hand, basically which one would be preferable. So both, both being used and not alternating would be the easiest. Uh, and then the, all in the same hand would be the most difficult. These, these are kind of, you know, you can weight this separately. So it's not a huge deal about the differences here. Um, and then the row, each one of these has a pretty discrete description of it with examples. And then the fingers is where it gets pretty complicated um, because you're not only considering where which finger is being used, but also the key being repeated. And obviously for each one of those, there's different weights in figuring out how much effort that path takes. This is one of the examples of plugging in these three weights here. And it gives you a bunch of examples of what those keys would be. So all in all, it's a pretty neat model. Um, it's not, you know, optimized for what we might want it to do. You know, looking at keyboards that have different layouts, uh, which is what we would call a key map and different keyboard arrangements, which is what we call the layout in QMK. So I took some liberties to try to adapt that. So this is a page that uses that uh, Carplex model and uh, makes some adjustments to try to basically analyze any keyboard you can throw at it. So I've loaded um, some uh, two plank key maps and a trace and, and a clue board key map so you can kind of see what's going on here. Um, this is the default QWERTY plank key map. Uh, right now it just shows the, the frequency here. Um, and we running through the thing, we can see our, our base effort, our penalties and path, and the total effort. Um, the values are going to be a lot different from what you see in the Carplex model if you if you were to run that in there. Um, but right off the bat, we can kind of see how, how, you know, just changing to Colmac, how that compares. And just looking at the heat map, you know, obviously the most used keys are kind of all over the place, whereas Colmac, they're concentrated on in the center here. And you can see, like, the Atreus, like, well, it does make a lot of adaptations for your fingers, it doesn't do that with the with the key map, you know, if it's in QWERTY, like everything's still kind of all over the place. Now obviously the same goes uh, with the clue board because they're, they're both QWERTY in this case. So this is the model I put together. It's a uh, pretty hastily written, just trying to get it, uh, get it working. But here we have all, all of the, the thing, all the weights we can change. This line defines the, the row weight. So like this is the middle row here, the home row basically. And the higher number here is more difficult, basically, more more effort. Um, the same with the fingers here. So your, your pinkies are weighted higher than your uh, index and middle fingers. And the tables for the hands and the rows can be simplified into these matrices that just uh, basically look at um, the bits of the hand, let zero being left and one being right, and uh, chooses which index to use. And the same with the row, but it's a little more complicated. Uh, then the fingers are really complicated. I ended up putting it in a separate sheet here. Basically, there, there's three digits here, and each one of them is a is one of your fingers, zero being your left pinky and seven being your right pinky. And this basically uh, uh, describes an index to each one of them, kind of describing what it is and tries to group them together so it's easier to classify. The indexes are from zero to seven again, and they're not quite the same as the original model. I adjusted them a little bit to try to make a little more sense in this, and this will probably get refined a lot later. But I think it's neat looking at this. You can see um, the clear patterns here, and it kind of helped me group them together in ways that made sense. So for like zero, it's probably the least effort. A roll, when it's used in this context, is just kind of a sequential finger. So like three, two, one, or one, two, three, or something. And then inner roll is where that starts on the outside of your fingers, like from the pinky, and goes to the index. And an outer roll would be starting at your index and going to the, towards the pinky. So an inner roll is a little bit easier to do. Um, so that, that's weighted a little lower back in that array. And so here is like a balance between two characters. Um, isn't really the most difficult thing. That's just where it kind of ended up when I was running through all this stuff. But something like this makes it a lot easier to um, visualize the data and then 
you know, you, if you click this and then you just copy it and put it into the code. And each one of those seven is kind of weighted here so that it just grabs this index based on the three fingers that are input to it and uh, then gives it a weight. And then that weight is also, um, then also uses one of these numbers to kind of balance it out. And a lot of these numbers that seem arbitrary are just from the model that was from Carpelex. Um, I'm not sure if those need adjusted or anything. I'm not, not really sure how they how that those came to be or anything. But obviously, eventually that can be expanded out. You can adjust them on the fly and the, the on the page and everything. So looking back at the analyzer, right now you can drag and drop the JSON files from the configurator for QMK and load them all and check them all out. Um, and it updates it when you, you click on it. And you can also sort this sort of stuff. And when you load these sorts of files, and it tries to guess where your home row is by looking at um, either ASDF or ARST um, for Colmac. I don't have Dvorak in there yet, but it'd, it'd be pretty trivial to put it in. Um, but it, it guesses a home row, and then it determines the effort based on that, based on where the key is physically. So this is pretty easy for a keyboard like mine. Um, everything's just kind of spaced out. But it also works for something like a clue board. Um, kind of works for the Atreus. Obviously, like this doesn't take into the tilt into consideration, but this in this case it's kind of okay because it's not really looking at um, that angle between the the keyboards in terms of um, effort. I think at some point it would be nice to if if you can't support it in the actual key map, just have it as a factor. It's like okay, you know these two hands are separated by you know 15 degrees or something, and it takes that that comfort into consideration when evaluating everything. So in addition to the home row calculation, it also calculates where your thumbs would be. And so basically it just takes the uh, down two rows and over one. So basically like your uh, your thumbs would be like where the space bar is. And that works for some keyboards better than others. I haven't, like these are the only three keyboards I've run through here so far, but I imagine it's probably not gonna work for a lot of other ones. In lieu of actually calculating it, I think being able to manually enter it and say, hey, this is where my thumb sits, uh, based all the calculations around this, you know, the center thumb location would work pretty well. And the same goes for the home row as well. So in addition to the finger calculations for these, it also calculates the thumb and also modifiers. So like it, it does look at shift a little bit. So I have a, a, a shift one where the shift is moved where the thumb would be. And you can see how the effort uh, and penalties drop quite a bit compared to the normal Colmac one. And I thought that was pretty interesting. And so obviously you can go through here and just you know move keys around wherever you want and see where things end up. And eventually this is kind of broken down into fingers and, and thumb effort so you can get a better idea of where um, you know all the penalties and the base effort and even the path stuff is coming from. It's also looking at the layers here. So it, it's looking at when it uses the layer key to access various keys that are on different layers. Um, I just have them displaying like um, 0, 1, 2 right here. This is like a three layer version of the blank key map. Um, that I modified so it's easier to look at. But you could stick as many layers on here as one, as long as there's a modifier key, which is right now being represented by this um, triangle. It, it sees that and knows that this is a layer key that it needs to look up later as a as a hold key, in addition to the finger keys that's either used by the thumbs or another finger or whatever. And there's probably some better detection that can be done here to figure out like which one's the closest, or which one would be the most, the lowest effort used in certain situations. That'd be especially useful in like hold tap keys. If you have like a, um, I think like the Ergodox has like a Z key that is also a, a layer key in that way. It'd be able to know that, you know, you tap this key to get a Z, then you, you hold it to get a layer modification um, and evaluate those efforts in a way that makes sense. Eventually this could support all the same keys that we do in QMK and knows, and you know, it knows the context about what they do and how they work. Um, right now it's a pretty basic implementation of like the momentary keys. So the reason I started doing this because I was working on the default Priyana key map again, trying to get something that made sense. And I've been using it here to type a lot and just getting frustrated with like, oh, this key is difficult. To, like, I thought this would make sense, but it's actually kind of difficult to use in this way. So I wanted something that kind of gave me a, an objective measure of what was the easiest. And, and just knowing the model too, it kind of gives you a better understanding of what, like where to place keys and how to arrange things. When I first started messing around with the plank, there was this like Urkel-matic or something layout that we were kind of messing around with where it moved the home row positions out and then move all the keys on the edges into, into the interior, which is kind of the same idea as the type matrix. If you've seen one of those, it has more important keys in the center where they can be typed by your um, index fingers. And with this uh, corpus, which is just some um, book found on Project Gutenberg, so it's basically just regular text. There's no special characters or anything. But this doesn't really change a whole lot um, and actually makes some things more difficult, which I'm not entirely sure why. I think it's related to the thumb effort being farther away, but eventually that'll be broken out so you can understand 
you know, where that stuff is coming from. But if we instead look at some text, like this is some HTML and JavaScript and CSS from the actual file that runs this, um, paste it in, which obviously contains a bunch of regular text too. So in this case, the um, outside Colmac version has a lot lower penalties and a little lower path, but the base is a little bit higher. I, again, I think that's due to the thumb calculation here. But it's still interesting to see how a little change like that, just moving these outside keys in, can can affect things uh, that much. Because that's a, that's a fairly significant change. So yeah, you can paste in whatever text you want here and have it look at it. Um, you can drag in as many files as you want in, in one go and have it look at all of them at the same and then you know change the text and try another one or something like that. Um, eventually I have some buttons up here that kind of load some basic default ones to make it a little bit easier to look at. And the same goes with the keyboards as well and the key maps, just to make it a little easier to understand. The model itself needs a lot of work here, but um, like off the bat, it kind of gives us a pretty good understanding of what, of how things are affected and how moving things around just a little bit can really make a, a large change. So yeah, I'll, I'll link to this and the repo itself in the comments. And, uh, and if you're interested in messing around with this and working on it, um, you know, just open a pull request. But eventually I'm, I'm hoping this will be a part of the configurator where you can just, you know, when you mess around with your key map, you can see, you know, how much effort a, a certain text would take typing on it. I think it'd be kind of kind of neat to compare both the individual key maps for keyboards and even keyboards themselves if we can get the model um, set up accurately enough. And that's one concern I have with this sort of model is I don't necessarily want to compare keyboards because it's not really fair to do that just because it doesn't take into consideration a lot of things that, um, different keyboards have clear advantages over, especially like ones like the Atreus, where it's just a lot more comfortable hand position than, than the plank or, or a normal staggered keyboard. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, check out the links and uh, let me know what you think.